my friends. Welcome to Copenhagen. Originally a Viking fishing village established in the 10th century, and since early 15th century till today, the capital of Denmark. I will take you with me on a three-day tour of the city, where we will get to explore the main sites together, visit the famous Little Mermaid, admire the royal castles, and so much more. Are you ready for it? Let's go! The first place we are visiting today is famous Newhaven district. Newhaven or New Harbour is a 17th century waterfront and canal district constructed by King Christian V. It is a gateway from the sea to the old inner city at King Square where ships were handling cargo and fishermen's catch. As most of the harbors, it was notorious for beer, sailors and prostitution. The northern side of Newhaven is lined by bright covered townhouses built with wood, bricks and plaster. The oldest house at number 9 dates from 1681. There are also various bars and restaurants to visit here, where in the summer people sit outside. For us, the weather in February was dry and sunny, but too windy to enjoy a coffee outdoor. The first bridges across Newhaven opened in 1874. It was a temporary wooden footbridge that was replaced by a current bridge in 1912. The Great Memorial Angkor at the end of Newhaven is a monument commemorating more than 1,700 Danish officers and sailors who sacrificed their lives during World War II. The anchor was inaugurated in 1951. Around 11 o'clock, we planned to visit a tower of City Hall. Copenhagen City Hall is a beautiful building very close to Newhaven that houses the Municipal Council of Copenhagen as well as the Office of Mayor. To visit the tower, you have to buy a ticket that costs 40 Danish crowns or 5.40 euros and join a guided tour that runs Monday to Friday at 11 or 14 or on Saturdays at 12 o'clock. You can buy tickets at the city hall shop or if you have Copenhagen card, the entrance is for free. The tower itself is one of the tallest buildings in Copenhagen with a height of 105.6 meters. There are about 300 steps and the more you go up, the narrower it gets. But once you reach the viewing platform, you have a 360 degree view of the city. You will admire a splendid view over Tivoli Garden, Christian Borg Palace and other palaces, parks, all the cute rooftops, just every angle of Copenhagen. The whole tower visit lasted around 30 minutes and we were ready for our next stop. But we will come back to the city hall at 1 o'clock to take a guided city hall tour.
In the meanwhile, we took a walk in the nearby shopping street called Stroget. Excuse me for my probably wrong pronunciation, not only of this word, but of many other Danish names. Stroget is Copenhagen's main shopping street and one of Europe's longest pedestrian streets where you can find a lot of souvenir shops, traditional sweets, bakeries, and of course clothing brands like Hermes, Prada, Max Mara, Gucci, Louis Vuitton. When you continue strolling down the shopping area, you cannot miss Caritas Brunden, Caritas Well, the oldest fountain in Copenhagen, built in 1608. The square is surrounded with coffee shops and restaurants, where you can sit and enjoy the area. On the way back to the city hall for our city hall guided tour, we passed by Hans Christian Andersen Experience Museum. Hans Christian Andersen is Denmark's famous fairy tale writer who wrote stories like The Little Mermaid, The Ugly Duckling, The Red Shoes and many more. Inside the museum you can learn more about his childhood, inspiration for writing, as well as his life in general. The ticket for the museum is 64 Danish crown or 8.74 euros. At 1 pm we arrived to the city hall for our tour. Guided tours in English are organized at concrete timings from Monday to Friday at 1 pm or Saturday at 10 am. The price is 60 Danish crown or 8 euros and you can get to hear all the interesting stories and secrets about the city hall. You don't need to do a tour with a guide to visit it. City hall is open for free for the public. Except that with guided tour you will be able to visit some beautiful and important rooms that are possible to visit only with a guide. In the building, you will be able to see a lot of painted ceilings, ornate wood cravings, mosaic tiled walls and much more. One of the impressive rooms to see was the library of City Hall. If you wish, you can come here, sit and work in the library. There is even a free Wi-Fi connection available. The next room is city parliament room where the city laws are discussed and decided together with their seven mayors of the city. In the next room you can see displayed portraits of mayors where every mayor had the freedom to choose with which artist he would like to work. Some of the portraits are very modern. The last room we visited was this huge, stunning room that is often rented for a lot of money for special ceremonies, events and similar. By the way, while we are talking about ceremonies, it is very popular to get married in the city hall of Copenhagen. So you will easily spot couples posing in their wedding dresses and suits and making some unforgettable memories. Okay, time for coffee, I would say. While we are drinking this delicious coffee, I want to share with you that Danish people are predominantly coffee drinking nation with a tradition that led to the consumption of approximately 20 million of cups every day. Denmark ranks among the top 10 coffee drinking nations 
with an average Dane consuming 1.46 cups of coffee per day. Impressive, I would say. I didn't know about Danish coffee tradition before, but I noticed very fast that there are coffee shops just at every corner and many people are walking around with coffee to go. Our last stop for this day was visiting the city's most impressive church called Frederick's Church, also known as the Marble Church. This beautiful church lies near Amalienborg Palace and the Opera, in the middle of the elegant area of Frederikstaden in central Copenhagen. It is famous and visible from far thanks to a characteristic copper-green dome. Although it is called Marble Church, it is actually not made from marble. The church has a history of on and off starting of building it, but it finally opened in 1894, 145 years after the first stone was laid. Entering the church is for free. After having an afternoon coffee in a local chain of coffee shops called Espresso House, we took a walk on the way back to our hotel to prepare for the evening going out. We went through the Struget shopping street, where people were still busy with shopping. By the way, we stayed in a hotel called Steel House, and we had a great experience staying there. The area where we can find a lot of restaurants for eating and bars for going out is called Westerbro. The choice of food and drinks is endless, for every budget. There are a lot of fast food stands, as well as more mid-ranged or pricier places for dinner, just for every taste. Next day, we started with a delicious coffee at a local chain called Emery's Coffee House and Bakery where we had a cappuccino for a price of 38 or 49 Danish crown, depending on the size, which is 5.10 or 6.60 euros per cup. Our coffee house was located just next to the street called Magastrede, one of the oldest streets in the old town of Copenhagen. The street was created in the 1520s and the oldest building in the street is the symmetrical house at numbers 17 to 19 which dates from the far 1640s. This day was reserved for visiting three famous castles in Copenhagen Christiansborg Palace, Amalienborg Palace and Rosenborg Palace. But since this video is already pretty long, I dedicated a separate video only to these three palaces in Copenhagen. Now I will share with you just a few facts about them. Christiansborg Palace was once home to kings and queens, and today it houses the Danish Parliament the Supreme Court and the Ministry of State. The most exciting part of this visit are the royal reception rooms, and the ticket costs 95 Danish crown or 12.70 euros. Amalienborg Palace is the seat of the royal Danish family, one of the world's oldest monarchies. It presents the private interiors of the most recent kings and queens and the treasury 
with world-class jewelry. The ticket costs as well 95 Danish crown. Rosenborg Castle, personally my favorite one, was built by one of the most famous Danish kings, Christian IV in the 17th century. The castle features 400 years of royal treasures and the ticket costs 125 Danish crowns or 1680 euros. This day, while the sun was already settling down, we went to explore the Copenhagen harbor and also visit a little friend that despite its small size is very famous in the whole world. I think you may have the idea about which little friend I'm talking about. Yes, the one and only, the little mermaid. The sculpture was inspired by Hans Christian Andersen's famous fairy tale about a mermaid who gives up everything to be united with a young handsome prince on land. Every morning and evening she swims to the surface from the bottom of the sea and perched on her rock in the water she stares longingly towards the shore hoping to catch a glimpse of her beloved prince. The amazing story about love and passion, fairy tale that everyone should read. The rest of the day we spent walking by next to the harbor and thinking if we would be lucky to see a mermaid coming out of the water surface. And while daydreaming about fairy tales, it was time for afternoon coffee. By the way, my friends, as you can maybe notice, we love to visit local coffee houses while traveling. Drinking coffee and searching for cute coffee shops is one of our small rituals that we always have while in a foreign city. Please, share with me in the comments, what are your traveling rituals? I would love to read all about them. Second evening, we went out around the area in the old town, but there were a lot of nightclubs with long lines waiting for entering them. Bars, fast food stands, etc. We actually ended up in a place called an old Irish pub near our hotel, exactly in the Westerbrogade street, where there was a great happy hour deal and we had a lot of fun listening to live music. Our last day in Copenhagen, we started with a visit to the National Museum of Denmark, located very close to the city hall. The museum is huge and definitely worth a visit. The ticket costs 110 Danish crown or almost 15 euros. The museum exhibition is covering long Danish history, but the most interesting part for us was visiting the exhibition about Vikings. Thousand years ago, the Vikings left an indelible mark on many parts of Europe and Denmark, their homeland, has been shaped by Viking culture. The exhibition contains the world's largest collection of treasures from the Viking Age. Among many exhibited objects, there was also the legendary Danish ship called Ruskilde VI, which has been exhibited in museums around the world. The Viking ship has an incredible length of 37.4 meters. At the exhibition, 
we learned a lot about the newest researches about the Vikings, how they were dressing, what were they eating, which diseases they suffered from, or what were they doing while they were not engaged in the war or traveling. After this great cultural experience, we went to visit the famous hipster district of Copenhagen, called Norebro. One of the most popular streets in this area is called Jägersborgade, but it was unfortunately pretty much under the construction when we arrived. The street is full with cute colorful buildings, chic boutiques, restaurants, shops, bakeries, coffee shops, and so on. From there, we took a metro line to get to our last destination of the day. Metro is very good connected to the city, although we actually used it only this time, since the rest we always managed to do by foot or with a bus. You can buy tickets from the ticket machine and it costs 20 Danish crown or 2.70 euros. The metro system looks very modern, clean and safe. But the best part is that there are no metro drivers. The Copenhagen metro is served by driverless trains. Everything is automated. So if you sit in front in the metro train like we did, you get a really cool experience like you are driving it. The experience that you cannot get when there is a real driver. When you get out of the metro station Christianshafen, hit southwest towards Doningenskade. In approximately 15 minutes, you'll be entering the Bohemian district. Already by coming closer, you will notice that things are working here differently than in the rest of Copenhagen. There is a lot of street art, and you may start smelling marijuana in the air. Christiania is a former military base that was abandoned for many years before becoming the neighborhood called Freetown Christiania. In 1971, a group of hippies broke down the barricades and began settling here. Nowadays, approximately 900 people live in the area, representing a community that has its own rules and regulations, independent of the Danish government. This is a sign that you see while exiting Christiania Freetown, and this is what you see while entering. Since its opening, Christiania has been famous for its open cannabis trade, taking place in Greenlight District, the street named by the Christiania's council. Since 70s, Freetown Christiania has also a history of hard drugs trading and use of heroin, but since heroin brought a lot of deaths and troubles, they decided to ban hard drugs here. During the last years, the residents are even trying to clean their town from cannabis and make it safer. But beside the drug part, Christiania has actually much more to offer than it maybe sounds. They have cute bakeries, vegetarian restaurants, other ground venues and jazz bars. They organize more than 300 events per year. By the way, 
The only part in Christiania where it is allowed to photograph or film is close to the entrance. And inside the town, only where this little cute gallery is located. So be careful what you film. We had a nice time exploring Christiania. But if you don't want to walk here on your own, I heard that there are tours organized by the local people, especially during summer months. That's it, my friends. Hope you enjoyed the tour of Copenhagen. It was my pleasure to be your guide. See you in the next video.